Okay. Now we're going to do a little, another simple one, but slightly more complicated. Now we're going to turn on an output based on pressing an aux button. Okay. Now, previously we ended up defining uh, output 6 as OT6. I'm going to continue to use OT6. So I'm just going to search in the PLC program here for OT6. All right, and here is the logic for that. So now, rather than turning on OT6 based on that uh, that switch, I'm going to have it turn on based on the state of the uh, actual aux key. And I'm going to use, let's say, aux 3. All right, so let's go ahead and let's see. Turn on OT6 based on state of aux 3. Okay. It's going to be exactly the same as this. It's just that rather than now looking at the state of this input, which was defined as switch 16, I'm going to be looking at the state of this aux 3 key. Okay. But now, since I don't actually have a physical jog pendant, uh, I'm also going to end up putting it um, either the aux3 key or the, the system variable associated with the aux3 key, which is skin aux3. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I could have it where either of those two things, or those two conditions, will be set just by adding the OR in there. So this means that either the physical button, which is aux 3 k and if you didn't know that it was a physical button, if you did a search for aux 3 k you can see that it is physically an input that's tied to input 1061. All right. So either that, Or the skin event of the aux 3b, which the skin event is what's uh, being used from the virtual control panel. So either if either of those two items or conditions are met, then OT6 be turned on. All right. So let me just go ahead and comment that out. So I'm going to have it to where aux 3 key is if that turns on or that skin aux3 is set then i'm turning that out now the other thing that i need to do is because i am this is the only part of the condition that's going to be controlling this ot6 but because i'm already taking something that already had these things defined and probably has logic in there i need to see what other things are being set to that all right so as I can see here, this one is just a, where it's defining as a skin event. But here's another condition that says if either that aux3 key is being pressed or this is a keyboard shortcut key for the aux3 or the skin event, then do aux3. Well, the do aux3 is a system variable that the PLC program sends to the CNC software. So if the aux3 button is pressed, then this tells the CNC software, do what you need to do for the aux3. Now that aux3 can be defined by one of those parameters 188 or 187 through uh, 199. Those you can have it to where you can associate an aux button to perform a macro, which we will go over later as well. But for the time being, I don't want the, C the CNC software to do anything I want the only thing that I want to control or that handles the aux3 is to turn on that output. So that means that I need to go in here and comment that out. All right. So if I continue to look on there, and if there was any other logic that performed that, I would have to comment that logic out. And so I make sure that the logic that I put in there is the only thing that would affect that. And as of right now, that is true. Okay. So now I'm going to put in that I'm going to turn that output on based on uh, that aux button being set. That means that if I push and hold it down, that output will be on. The moment I release it, that output will turn off. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and save this. Call it Ox Test. Call it that. Save it. Compile it. Compile successfully. All right. So now that it compiled successfully, I want to go ahead and test it out. Power off on one DC. That should have been enough time. Okay, let's bring up that PLC diagnostic. All right, now let's go ahead and press that AUX3 button. Now, as you can see, I'm pushing and holding. Output 6 is on. The moment I let go of that, that turned off. Okay. As I press it and hold it, that output is on. The moment I release it, that output is off. 